What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Temptations. Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so Rush Baptist Church and to our morning service together. How we would love for everyone to be in our church building, but that can't be the case because of the restrictions at this present time. But we're glad to be able to come onto our YouTube channel and just bring you God's word, the same message that will be preached uh, this Lord's Day in, in, the, in the, the church building. I just remind you of, of our services during the week. Remember our Bible study on Wednesday evening at 7.30. And again, God willing, that will be on the YouTube channel. And remember our morning moments um, from Monday to Friday. Now, let me tell you something. This will be our last week. Uh, this is the last week of the morning moments. But what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to do a word for the weekend on a Friday morning. So this incoming week will be the last week of our morning moments. But on Friday morning at 10 o'clock, we're going to have a word for the weekend, so you can tune into that as well. But it's good to have you, and thank you so much for uh, tuning in uh, this morning to listen to God's word. Let's just bow in a word of prayer. Father, as we bow in thy most gracious and merciful presence this morning, we thank thee again for, for your promise that where the twos and the threes would be met together, that you would be in the midst. Father, we thank thee that they meet together in your name. They meet together, our Father, claiming your Christ, as their Savior. Father, we do thank thee for the Lamb of God that taketh away our sins. And although our Father were separated because of restrictions, yet our Father, we thank thee that we can come together in spirit and together know your presence in our midst. Father, we just remember the days we're living in. We believe we're living in the last of the last days. We believe our Father God that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon for his bride, the church. And very soon, our Father, we believe that we will be caught up to be with the Lord. And Father, we realize that in the world that we live in, there is much sin, there is much confusion, there is much to worry people. But Father, we thank thee that our hope is find a resting place, not in device nor creed, it's in the ever living one. His wounds for me now plead. We thank you, Father, for the victory of Calvary. We thank thee for the assurance of our salvation. 
We thank thee, our Father, for everything that you have given to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray this morning that as we turn to your word, we might know your blessing through it. And in doing that, that we might be the salt and the light in this world. Father, we pray for our nation today. And Father, it's a nation that has lost its way. It's a nation that has turned its back upon thee. Uh, Father, we pray again for those in the corridors of power that they would turn their gaze to thee, that they would bow the knee before thy throne and worship only thee and call upon thee to heal our land in these days. Father, we just pray for a revival, a mighty move of the Spirit of God amongst the people of God, a real time of spiritual awakening, our Father, where the church of Jesus Christ would be ablaze for your glory. That even in these last closing days of time, we might have the joy of winning souls to thee. And so, Father, we pray that you will bless your word to our hearts this morning. Bless those who are listening. Bless their families. Father, we just pray for household salvation for every family that is watching in today. We ask these things in Jesus' precious and lovely name. Amen. Amen. Now, folks, we're in Psalm 23. You know that by now, and I'm sure you have your Bible and all sorted out and ready to go. So without any further ado, let me read Psalm 23 to you. This is the word of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And we know that God again will bless the public reading of his own inspired, precious, holy, infallible word. Let me just remind you, I can't remember where I did or not. That's a sign of old age. But remember our gospel meeting tonight at 6.30 and tune into that as well. But we have been looking at how are we to walk in these last days. As the people of God, we believe that we're coming near to the end of the age, the end of, of the day of grace. And we believe the next great event in God's prophetic calendar is the return of the Lord Jesus Christ for his church. So how are we to walk in these days? Hebrews, 1, Hebrews 11 and 1 says this, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In verse 6 it says this, But without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Someone has said that faith is dead to doubt, dumb to discouragement, blind to impossibilities, and knows nothing. Nothing but success in God. Beloved, we have been looking at this beautiful psalm under the title of how to walk in these last days. And up until now, we have seen that we are to walk with our head up, verse 1. We are to walk with a calm spirit, in verse 2. And we are to walk with a true witness. That was a challenging message last week, in verse 3. But this morning, I want us to consider as we look at verse 4. I want us to consider that as God's people, we are to walk in the sovereignty of God. We are to walk in the sovereignty of God. This verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. We, we use this, and rightly so, there's no problem with that, when we're maybe talking to someone who's coming near the end of life, and, and we'll use this psalm, and especially verse 4 to bring comfort and encouragement to them. But, but really the reality of this psalm is that, that it's a, a verse that speaks of the sovereignty of God. You see, the world that we're living in today seems in the view of, of many people to be out of control. Confusion seems to reign everywhere you look. Doubt swamps the minds of, of many people. And fear runs rampant across the world today. And the vileness of the human heart is being fed by ample sin, a world that, that is now living in a way that I have never seen before in my lifetime, with a deliberate, blatant, open defiance to the word of God. And many are asking the question today as they look at the world and all that's taking place in the world, who's in charge? Brothers and sisters, how are we to walk in such a world? 
Because we are to walk. <laughs> we, we, we are to live here. We may, be, we may not be of this world, but we are in this world. And beloved, we are to walk having faith in the sovereignty of God. Amidst all the confusion and all the doubt and all the fear and all the sin, in the darkness of this world where death seems to stalk every step that man takes, we, the redeemed of God, are to walk in his sovereignty. In verse 4 of the psalm, I find three things that we have to have faith in if we are to walk in God's sovereignty. Firstly, we must walk with faith in God's plan. Psalmist says here, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. This is the first time in this psalm where, where darkness looms. Up until now, it has been green pastures. It has been the still waters. It has been the paths of righteousness. But David is discovering that when you follow the Lord as your shepherd, you may be called to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And beloved, I believe we're living in very dark days. And these are the last days, and I believe they're dark days. This is not the mountaintop experience that we all want and we all love and we all long for. And this is not the wide expanse of the green pastures where we can rest a while as long as you want, done daring to make us afraid. Beloved, this is the dark valley of the shadow of death the psalmist is in now. Hazed in by the insurmountable rocky mountain face, facing what looks like undefeatable foes that threaten only death. And yes, it may only be the shadow. But it makes every tree a monster and every sound a scream of terror. And where every wild beast seeks to make you its prey. Christian, is this not a picture of the world that surrounds us today? A world for man, whether he seeks to admit it or not. But by his actions and his deeds and his words have proven that he would rather have death than life. Death to the unborn child. Death to the God-given structures of marriage and family. Death to any Christian influence in our schools and society. More drugs, more sex, more immorality, more for me. Everything that brings death to the life and soul of man seems to be the desire, the insatiable appetite of man's heart today. And there is much that is threatening to the people of God. It's interesting to note that they tell us now that Christians are the most persecuted people group in the world. Not LGBT, not the Muslims, not anybody else, but Christians. But that doesn't make the news. Nobody cares about that. Nobody cares about the numbers of Christians that are being murdered today for their faith. Nobody cares about the Christians that are being put into prison today because of their faith. Nobody cares. It doesn't make news. For what does Paul tell us in Romans chapter 8 and verse 36? We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. We're worthless in the eyes of the world. We're of no importance. So what are we to do when surrounded by such shadowy threats? Well, beloved, we are to have faith in God's plan. We are to have faith in what God is doing. And we are to keep going for him. We are to walk in the midst of this dangerous world and sinful world. And we are to walk untempted by it. Beloved, all that's going on in the world today is the unfolding of God's sovereign prophetic plan. We are just getting a foretaste now of what is going to happen after the church of Jesus Christ leaves this world. What does the Lord say in Matthew chapter 24 verses 4 through to 8? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end. Not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine. Listen, 
There shall be famine and pestilence. What are we experiencing today in the world? And earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginnings of sorrow. Timothy tells us, or Paul says to young Timothy in 2 Timothy 3 and 4, he says in the last days that men will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And we live in a world today where, where people are more concerned about losing their holidays than losing their soul. They're more concerned about losing their night out to the pubs and the clubs than they are about losing their souls. Men are lovers of self and not lovers of God. Beloved, you and I are right in the middle of God's sovereign plan for this world and everyone in it. And let me remind you again that for the redeemed, we're only walking through the shadow. We're only walking through the shadow. But there's going to be an unleashing of judgment upon this world when the church is removed, the like of which it has never seen before. But we're just walking through the shadow. For Christians, Christ has triumphed over the substance of death at Calvary. Isn't it wonderful to see that the believer in this valley of the shadow of death is walking. I can remember. It made me think. My, my mind went away back to I was a youngster. And I was at uh, one of my friend's house. In Murfields. And I had to walk home. And it was about half a mile or so. And it was in the dark nights. And it was okay. I was walking down through Murfields. And past the primary school. And, and on out. And, and there was one or two street lights. At the side of the road. And I got a wee bit of light. But then all of a sudden. There was no more lights. And I was in darkness. And I was just a wee cub. At primary school age. And I want to tell you, I was terrified of the darkness. And you know something? I stopped walking and started running. <laughs> and I ran the whole way home. I was absolutely terrified of the dark. But here, in these dark, this dark valley of the shadow of death, there is such a confidence in the sovereignty of God that the psalmist says, we can walk through it. Beloved, when we can see the world from the viewpoint of heaven, when we can see what God is doing from the platform of God's sovereignty, it brings peace in the valley. Beloved, we are to walk in these last days unalarmed at what man sees as a world out of control. We're to be concerned for it, and we're to pray for it, and we're to weep over it. But we know who's in control. For we know God has his plan for this world and he has his plan for you and he has his plan for me. And all we have to do is walk. All we have to do is follow him. We are to walk with faith in God's plan. But secondly, beloved, we are to walk with faith in God's presence. I will fear no evil for thou art with me. It's impossible to escape the presence of evil. In this world. It overshadows us like a, a death shroud. You turn on your television. You lift a magazine. It's everywhere. It's all around about us. You walk down the street and you hear the language. It's everywhere. It has infested every heart. For the scripture says that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. It says this about the heart. The heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. And who can know it? And we can't bury our heads in the sand and deny the, the presence of evil. It's all around us. But here's a wonderful thing that we need to understand and a faith in as the people of God. That there is a presence that is greater than sin and Satan. There is a power that is the companion of the child of God that every force of darkness cannot overthrow. There is one who has bonded himself with the redeemed who has already bruised the serpent's head and defeated him. And he is the shepherd of our souls, the one whose hand rests with confident care upon our head. And with the sword of his word, he makes the demons fear and fly. Oh, child of God, have faith in the presence of the shepherd today. It is his presence that makes the dark clouds of evil flee away. He and he alone drives back the forces of evil. You see, he is 
the Lord. And do you see the wonderful change here? For up until now, David has been talking about the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He's been talking about the Lord. But now in the face of the onslaught of the dark shadowy evils that surround him, the threatening taunts of the enemy, he's talking to the Lord. He says, I'm in this valley, but I need not fear the evil that surrounds me, for you are with me. Oh, what did the Lord promise his disciples in John chapter 14 uh, and in verse 18? He says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Oh, beloved, have faith today in the sovereign presence of the shepherd. He will not desert you. In the dark valley. He has marked the path with his own precious blood. He has made the way through the valley by the cross. And there is nothing to fear if he is near. And even in the valley of the shadow. His paths are still paved with his righteousness. What does the psalmist say in Psalm 34 verses 4 and 5? I sought the Lord and he heard me. And delivered me from all my fears. They looked on him and were lightened. That means radiant. And their faces were not ashamed. Could I tell you, beloved, it is the presence of the Lord that brings light into the darkness. Ah, beloved, he is the one who stills the storms. Psalm 27 and verse 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 91 verses 4 and 5 says, He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flieth by day. Beloved, his plan is sovereign. His presence is sovereign. For none can thwart our progress through even the valley of the shadow of death to our heavenly home. No one. Oh, beloved, to walk in these last days, we are to walk in the sovereignty of God, having faith in his plan, having faith in his presence. But finally, we're to walk with faith in his promise. Psalmist says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I don't know if the rod and the staff are one and the same or whether uh, they are two different pieces of equipment. That's not that important for us today to try and sort out. But what is important for me is that the rod and the staff speak of the promises of God to his redeemed. His promise to protect us and his promise to guide us through this valley. Beloved, many unseen dangers await us as we make our way home to glory. In the shadows of evil, there lurks the enemy of our soul, seeking to foil our progress, to lay wounds upon us that would weaken our walk. He seeks out the weak of the flock like a hungry wolf, seeking whom he may devour. But he cannot have us. For our shepherd is our defense. He is the one who will bear us upon his shoulders and carry us when when we stumble and fall. When the, 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 the trials of the journey are too much and we grow weary, he will gather us up. And even if we go astray, his all seeing eye will find us and bring us back to himself. And in those times when we think we know best, And we don't need to rely on the Lord. And we don't have to follow the Lord. We don't have to seek the Lord. He uses a staff of his word to correct us and bring us into line. Beloved, our shepherd, the shepherd of your soul and the shepherd of my soul is well equipped to fend off all the enemies that we will face in the valley of the shadow. Look at what it says of him in Jude 1 verses 24. It says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. That lovely. And present you faultless before the presence of his joy, with the uh, presence of his glory with exceeding joy. 
Verse 25, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. He keeps you from falling. He presents you faultless. <laughs> what a promise. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Beloved, in these last days, let us walk in the sovereignty of God with faith in his plan, faith in his presence, and faith in his promise. And then even in these dark days in which we live, even in these valleys, we will know victory. And we will know the power of God. So beloved, let us, let us keep going for God. Let us keep walking. Let us keep following our shepherd. Amen. May God bless his word to our hearts and to our souls this morning. Let's just bow in a word of prayer. Father, again, we do thank thee for thy word. We thank thee for the privilege of preaching it. And Father, we pray that you will bless this beautiful verse to our hearts and to our souls. Father, that we would take notice of it, that it speaks very much of thy sovereignty. You are in control, our Father God. All of these things are working according to your plan and your purpose for the good of your people. Father, we realize that one of these days we're going home. One of these days we'll never have to walk through the valley of the shadow anymore. But Father, while we're here and while we're walking, we thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ who walks with us. We thank thee that he is our shepherd. He is the one who will protect us and he is the one who will guide us. And all to him we owe. So Father, just commit our time to thee. We thank thee for the blessings of thy word and bless your people for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, folks. God willing, see you back here at 6.30 this evening. Until then, have a nice afternoon. God bless. Bye. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain free to all the living streams. From Calvary's mountain In the cross, in the cross Be my glory ever Till my wretched soul shall find Rest beyond the river Trembling soul, love and mercy found me. There the bright and morning star shed its beams around me. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory. Watch and wait.